What's going on everybody? It's your boy Payne. Welcome back to another Omni Heroes video. Alright guys, as you can see on the screen, I've put up all the tiers for every single faction we've done so far. So we've done Ethereals, we've done Val uh, Valiant, Valiantators, I hate that name, I swear, it's so awkward. I don't think it's a real word. Uh, anyways, we're doing the Mystifiers next. Okay, so if you want to follow suit guys, remember these are going to be your tier list for each Synergy faction, not just for the units. These are the units within their own Synergies. I'm going to put it this way, that way when we complete the entire thing, you'll have a full synergy tier list with every single tier on there and the units when, in terms of where they belong, okay? So this one here is going to be interesting. Now, the Mystifiers are a unique team because they work off of Corrode, okay? So Corrosion essentially is a dot that you apply on an opponent or many dots you apply on your opponent and it takes uh, damage over time and they also apply shields. There are specific units, though, that you have to use to make this work, and they're pretty costly, and we're going to talk about each one of these units like we did in the other tier list. So let's get down to business. So first off, um, let's talk about the worst unit out of all of them. We're going to do the epics as usual because some people will use them just to fill in the gaps for the time being, all right? And we're going to start with the worst one, and that is going to be Percival. Uh, absolutely a horrible unit in my opinion. So um, he sacrifices his own HP to do damage to the back line. Uh, really brings nothing else besides uh, a little bit of damage and a lot of sacrifice of HP. And then when he um, loses a lot of his HP, his magic damage goes up. Uh, again, he's pretty much the epitome of food. So that is going to be your big food unit, okay? Uh, so he's going to be the worst unit here for sure. Medusa's one level above him only because she actually does do some decent damage for an epic at 250% to all enemies with her ultimate. Uh, she does do attack uh, reduction as well to an enemies. Uh, and then on the same line, so she has a 100% um, chance to actually apply attack reduction, which isn't bad. So you at least have a little bit of debuffs there. And then she also has more damage on controlled enemies. So she does do more damage with anyone who has attack reduction. So she's not bad, but I mean, like, essentially you're going to get past her fairly quickly. And you're not going to be used her fairly, uh, like, after that at, at any point, okay? So let's go through the rest of them. All right, Minotaur. B. Minotaur is going to be a corrosive unit here who offers a couple different things and let's go through the list of what he offers and what he does for you okay so first off he's going to be your tank uh one of your tanks at least he uh he does he so what he does is he does 260 percent physical damage to the enemies and doubles the number of corrode stacks on the target so that part's not bad so if you're using a lot of corrode stacks which some units will provide you which we'll go through over uh, again he does increase and doubles the number of targets um, sorry, the number of corrode stacks on that target. So if you drop, if they're dropping, he'll up them. Or if you, they already have a lot, and he does this, um, he'll double the stacks. Now the most important thing to remember is there is a cap on the amount of corrode somebody can have. Okay, so keep that in mind. Uh, his active skill, Corrosive Crystal Burst on Minotaur, he applies curse marks on a target, dealing 84% physical damage to all enemies, and doubles the number of corrosion stacks again. So again, providing you that with his active skill. So pretty often, and then his his passive is. Uh, Increases damage reduction by 30%, uh, for, and then every 1% of cure rate that he has, he increases his, atta his attack as well. And then um, his actual awakening skills, attack, HP, and defense. So pretty good unit for increasing corrode uh, stacks on there, but overall does really, really minimal damage, and that's something to note, okay? Uh, next up is going to be Ose. Ose or Os. I'm gonna put him in A, okay? So, Shadows of Ground summons uh, Vines to attack a single target. He's a power unit, uh, so uh, sorry, an attack unit, um, and so a warrior essentially. Uh, and he has a 100% chance uh, to apply five stacks of Corrode on the enemy. So pretty good ultimate, good way to start off the Corrosions. Uh, his active skills, he deals 120% physical damage, 100% chance to apply two more Corrosions on the enemy. Uh, and then his passives, when Ose is deployed, for every stack of Corrode an ally team applies on the enemy, there's a 30% chance to apply one stack of decreased, decreased defense. So that obviously lowering the defense of the opponent. So making him a fairly good Corros corrosive unit for the beginning, uh, you will eventually replace him fairly quickly, and he will be probably used less and less as you get the higher tiered units, but so far, A unit for him, he's not the worst 
for that, okay? All right, next up is going to be Emily. Let's do Emily next right here, the Ghost Bride, okay? Uh, so her active is, so her special, sorry, ultimate. Um, summons a Gravestone to attack all enemies dealing magic damage. Has a 100% chance to apply two stacks of Corrode. If the target has five stacks of Corrode, heal all allies for 5% of their HP. So pairing these two together works really well. The unfortunate part is he does physical damage, she does uh, magic damage, but it's okay. It works well because of the Corrode option here, but she works better with other options, and we'll talk about that as well. Emily summons Rose Vines to attack four random, uh, four random units dealing 140% magic damage. Has a 100% chance to apply one stack of Corrode to them. Lasts for three rounds. And then her passive here is when Emily's deployed, the limit of Corrode stacks increase by five. So note that you there's only a limited amount of Corrodes you can do, but having specific units will increase the amount you can stack. So having her on there is essential because she will increase the amount of corrosions you can do. Uh, she'll be an A unit here because they kind of work hand in hand here in my opinion. So keep that in mind, okay? Very important to note that. All right, next up is gonna be one of the key elements to actually you know what we're gonna put her in s because she does increase the stack so we'll put her in s i think she deserves that just because you're getting more damage out of her once you be able to pass the certain threshold of, of corrosion next up we're gonna do is franz so franz here is one of the key components to this group okay so his ultimate is he does 350 percent magic damage to four enemies and has a hundred percent chance to apply three stacks of corrosion okay so that gives you three right away franz grips his death claw and magic attacks all enemies uh again Full AoE, dealing 150% damage and has a 100% chance to apply another two stacks of Corrosion. And then his passive here is every single 1% of uh, Cure Rate gives him 1% attack. And then when he's deployed, damage dealt by all allies by 100% whenever somebody has Corrosion on them. So Corrosion will do, sorry, when Francis is deployed, increases Corrode damage by 100%. So super, super important uh, to have him in place to do corrosion damage and it does a lot more okay so you have to you, you pretty much need him for this mystifiers group to be effective the only reason you know what he, the only reason why i'm gonna put him in s is he just doesn't stack enough corrode okay that's kind of the problem so let's move on and talk about the next unit here and that's gonna be uh bastet now bastet is is unique for this group because she applies corrode on her ultimate uh for, on everybody she does a lot of magic damage 375 percent so three stacks of corrode 375 percent bestet uses mystifier synergy to cast a cat's claw and attacks three random enemies dealing 180 magic damage and applies another three stacks and this is where she becomes very unique at the start of the battle if the debuffs of the enemy exceeds 30 stacks including corrode bastet and the ally with the highest attack will both have the ignore shield effect when dealing damage for one round so this is very important because when you're fighting a lot of demons and angels and royals who have shields you need to be able to to have corrode work better by ignoring the shield damage okay so she's going to be able to do that not only that though when she's deployed there's a 25 percent chance to double the corrode stacks applied on the enemies so there's if you put in three she has a chance to do six so probably the best corrode unit that's non angel non-demon okay speaking of angels and demons let's go with Thalos next okay he is going to be SS as well. Very important unit for this group because not only does he provide you shields, has very good skill damage to all enemies, and also uh, the, the shield lasts for four rounds, but he also does something unique, which is stun in this group because nobody has that. And then lastly, he actually increases crow damage dealt by all allies by 50%. A must have. To, and that's his passive, by the way. You need to have that in order for this corrosive team to work well so that's going to be your quote unquote tank uh and also your shielder and also your stunner and also your buffer for corrosion okay and lastly is dullahan now dullahan here is uh pretty damn good actually he does physical damage to all enemies has a 25 25 percent chance to apply taunt to up to three enemies for two rounds also increases taunt chance by one percent for every stack of debuff the target has so of course corrosion being on there being huge It'll increase his taunt abilities. Then what taunt does, if you don't know, it's a control effect. So giving uh, Emily more damage, of course, uh, if, if someone's taunted. Uh, not Emily, sorry, um, Medusa. Um, not So don't, not Emily, Medusa, guys. I apologize for that. Uh, taunt units is restricted only dealing physical attacks or basic attacks to the taunted enemy. They only attack him, and it's only, they can't do their specials. It's just their basic attacks, not even actives, okay? His active uh, charges three random enemies, uh, delivers a series of slashes, dealing 252 physical damage, and receives a shield equal to 50% of his max HP. And then lastly, when Dullahan is deployed, the limit of corrode stacks increased by five. So another increase there for you guys. So very important again to this team 
right there. So this is going to be your uh, your uh, mystifier setup. Now I will say this, and I've done the tier list already for the top units or top series uh, factions. Mystifiers, unfortunately, at the end drops off. Corrosion is really hard to stack; it takes too long. So when you're fighting burst teams at end game, they're usually going to destroy you fairly quickly before you can get the full corrosion stacks on there. But against PVE and against bosses, they do fairly well throughout the entire series from beginning to end. But PVP is where you're going to see a little bit of a problem eventually because burst teams like Ethereals and the Valianters will pretty much destroy you before you even get a chance to get the full stacks in. Anyways, guys, this is Payne. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you like this format. Eventually, you're going to see all of them on here, and we'll go from there. All right, guys. See you in the next one.